Hi, I'm Justin, and today I'm going to show you how to do a ship flap kitchen island. Hope you enjoy. The first thing you're going to do is measure your island to see how much material you're actually going to need for this job. I measured mine and it was less than uh, 8 foot, so I was able to get 8 foot boards and cut them down. I like to do one piece at a time just so that I get the right measurements for each one. As you can see, I already peeled off the corner of the baseboards and I left the main long struts of the baseboard. I'm actually using it as a ledge to hold the first piece because I'm going to come back later with some trim and that's all going to get covered up. Using 18 gauge brad nails into the tongue of the board and into studs that I've already marked off. And when you come across any of outlets, I like to use a scrap board and mark exactly where that's going to go on the board so that I can mark it on the piece that I'm going to use and cut it out. I'm putting as many nails into the tongue as I can. This is so that there are less holes to fill later and won't show up in the final product. You want to continue attaching boards all the way to the top and then you will have to trim down that top board to get the right fit. You just have to take the tongue end off and right up to the top of the counter. Once the front side is completely installed, it's time to do the outside edges. So my cabinets are a little recessed from the drywall that's on the corners. So I'm measuring so that I can cut a spacer out of a spare two by four I'd lie around. Once you're ready to install those spacers, you're gonna use two on each side, one for the very end and one in the middle. I just used some liquid nails to attach those with a couple of brad nails that were short enough to not go all the way through the cabinet. Never hurts to check to make sure it didn't go through. Once the support studs were installed, it's time to do the shiplap on this side. So as you can see, the corners aren't a big deal because you're going to come and cover that up with trim later. So just making sure that they're making it to that edge. They don't all have to be exact. You want to make sure to pull out any outlets so that they sit flush with the surface of the new boards. You might have to pick up a couple of longer screws to install those back into place. And you want to repeat those steps on the other side. Now comes the fun part that brings it all together. You are starting on the trim. So I like to do the corners first 
And to do this, you need to take some trim pieces and cut them down to size. So you take the measurement of one and cut off three quarters of an inch to account for the thickness of the other. And you want to install those together to make a little L or a corner bracket that's going to cover those rough edges uh, that you see there. The glue is what will really hold them together, but the brad nails will just clamp them up until the glue dries. After you've got all four corners covered, it's time to install the uh, long pieces across the top and bottom that will really bring this all together. After all your pieces are up, you wanna go around and make sure that all your nails are tapped in. Uh, this is a spring-loaded nail tapper that I have. It's really nice, it's on Amazon, all included in the description below. You then wanna go around and fill all your nail holes. I like to use this pink stuff. It is for filling drywall holes. It's really nice. I like to get it in the tube because it lasts a whole lot longer. Uh, it doesn't dry out as fast. I actually was able to use the entire tube before it dried out. After that's all dried, you want to go back with some light grit sandpaper, usually about 220, and sand that all down. And for a really professional look, I didn't get this on camera, but you want to go and caulk all of the seams where the trim meets the shiplap. So getting in all those corners will give you a real clean look uh, for when you finish painting. I would recommend painting with a sprayer. I didn't want to do all the setup, so I did it by hand with a foam roller, and I think the texture turned out great. It's best to use an enamel paint, uh, high gloss so it's easy to clean because this will get scuffed up by shoe marks, uh, dogs, pets, all running around. So <laughs> it's easy to clean. You want a, a high enamel paint. Well, I hope you'd enjoy this one. If you liked it, uh, feel free to like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.